All right, we are going to be finishing up our poster with this video. It will be our final uh, video for assignment six. Just looking at our videos so far, in this project we got introduced to vector type design, we got introduced to loading typeface, typefaces onto your computer from external sources. We used defont.com. We, we loaded those typefaces into Photoshop. We learned about how to do kerning and spacing and arcing and uh, faux font effects like bold and italicize in Photoshop. We also learned how to bring those typefaces into Illustrator where we can actually not just play with their kerning, their letting, the spacing around the letters, but also uh, play with turning them into vectors. And that's a requirement to create outlines out of your type so that they're fully customizable. And so instead of just refining your type, you are modifying it, turning it into something new. Then we are taking our black finished type and we finished it up in Illustrator, saving it as an EPS file. Then we could take it into Photoshop where we can set up a vector type layer as a smart object. And then we can start playing with layer styles to color the type. So that is what you see here. Let me turn off these background elements. And you want that color type to work with your color spot illustration on white backgrounds, on black backgrounds, and on gray backgrounds. Right. And notice that in a, a correct finished file for your poster, your, your black type layer is a vector smart object. It can't be edited, but you can use overlays. And then if I wanted to do additional things on top of that with the coloring, like coloring inside the letters, you just make duplicates from selections from the vector, very much like we did the digital coloring of our spot illustration. And then our spot illustration is just taken right from assignment five, and its vector shapes are left as a vector as well. It's vector outlines. Oh, that's the type. Because you don't want those to be edited. There they are. Even though you might have color holds on top of it. So remember those vector outlines, both for your type and for your spot illustration, are the real skill set you're trying to build here. Integrating vector images into your, your raster poster. So to finish this off, we want to create a background. And a background is simply something that runs behind your image, right? So you want something different than gray and black. I created a border here that I'm going to be turning off for now. Because your posters are also required to have a border edge. So let's just start with white. The first thing you can do is crop your image down all the way to what you think your borders should be for your poster. And you can do that by using the crop tool and then holding down option to have that crop tool scroll proportionally towards the middle. So let's say I want my poster's final proportions to be like this. I can use my arrow keys to nudge it up or down. I'm doing a proportion of 16 inches by 20 inches because that's the largest we can print in the lab. And that's at 320 pixels per inch. Next, I want to put a background behind my type design and my spot illustration. And I don't want that background to distract. I want it to add to the overall flow and appeal of it. And I had done this in a video, but then that video didn't process correctly, so I wasn't able to post it. But I went to Google Images, and I went to Pixabay, and I just searched for a cloudy sky in different ways for backgrounds. This one's actually quite nice, but that kind of inspirational stuff. You can also do it in Google Images. You look for the 
just like compositing. You look for your large issues. And I found this one, which I'm just doing normal. You see how it really blurs as I size it to fit this large resolution, but that's okay because this is a background element. So if I view the actual pixels, you know, they're just soft and in the background, whereas my vector edges are still really clear. But that's kind of boring, though it's better than just plain white. I liked that gradation. So I added a sunburst, and I set the sunburst at 75% and at a blending mode of pin light, which kept the blue gradation in there. It gave a little bit of the texture. This was a sunburst asset from Pixabay, kind of a retro sunburst. And you see it's only on the background because all of my vector elements, my spot illustration, my type, they all sit on top of it. Then I added what's called a halftone drop pattern over the top of that. That was from Pixabay. And that gives it kind of an old printing. We're going to learn more about halftone dots. And then I gave an overlay of actual clouds just to break it up a little bit more. You can see how subtle that is with soft light. This half tone is pretty strong. And then I did it again to make it a little bit stronger. And then I can keep modifying these different layered composites to figure out what I want. In fact, I think I want this one turned off because it's a little, little too strong. You see all those clouds. Or maybe I can just dim it more, or I can even set it to lighten rather than darken. Or I can try a different blending mode. It's a little dark, but I want that texture. So maybe soft light would be a good option. Yeah, it just brightens it a little bit. So I like the, the variations you get at the top there. Okay, once you're happy with your background, then we're going to add a border to it. Now, a border is really simple to do. So I'm going to delete the ones I created before, though I liked them, just because they weren't on the video. I'm going to get rid of any extra layers I don't need, you know, other types of coloring and so forth. I'm going to get rid of my flats because this is just for my finished poster. And you want to make sure that your background elements are 100% opaque so that your, your test backgrounds aren't going to break through. Then I'm going to leave the blank white background. And I'm simply going to crop everything just to its edges. This is just in case there is anything you brought in that has a lot of extra pixels off to the side. And there definitely are when you do background textures and you composite those in. So you crop those. So now everything's a nice clean shape. There are no pixels hanging off the edge. Now I can simply go to image canvas size and I can grow my borders from the center. And I'm just going to grow it by one inch on each side. So it's going to be 16.3 by 19.7. And you'll see it will give you an empty space border all the way around your image. And then I'm just going to go to that background white and I'm going to say edit, fill all of it with white. So we have a white border. And I can get off the crop tool and I have my finished poster. It's a good idea to look at it in real resolution. And I might decide, oh, I want to add some texture to some of this, like maybe for the welcome or maybe for the cloud behind it. Remember, everything is, is editable as long as you layered it correctly. I might actually use 
auto select and click on it. All right, so that's the cloud fill in. What if I wanted to give it just a little bit of a granular texture? I can do a few things. I think what I'll do is a bevel and emboss with texture. And then I can zoom in, show you what that looks like. And I can play with those settings. And if it's a little too strong, I can take down its depth and its overall opacity. I want this to be pretty subtle. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Let's just take its overall opacity down a little bit. Nice. So that's barely there, but that's going to help. And then maybe I want that on the, t the type as well right here. So I'm going to add that in texture and then let's play with that opacity a little bit. Make that a little more subtle. And I can do that with any aspect as I go. Until you feel you have a nice finished poster. Maybe I want to bring in another element, like I know we're going to need for this coloring book. And often you need more than just one title element. So I'm going to bring in, let's see, where do I have this? Our campus logo to put on the bottom. And I'm just going to use their black logo. So you see EPS files. I drag and drop it in. It comes in as a smart object because I dragged and dropped it in. That means I can scale it and it will be perfectly clean at any size. Whoops. But I don't want to hold down shift in the new Photoshop. I always forget that. Instead, I'm just going to hold down option to do it from the center. And then I can run that at the bottom. Or maybe I want the color logo. I can do that as well. So these PSD files, as long as you're using vector elements, will keep everything in one place for you. It's good professional practice. I think I like that better. So I'm going to place that, turn off the black one. And then it will tell me when I've centered it as I'm moving it around. Ah. I'm going to turn off auto select there because it keeps selecting the background. So if I grab it and I move it, it will give me that pink line when everything's centered. Now, what if I want to do something a little bit fancier with the border? At this point, I want to save my work. It's saved as my assignment six. It's my full color poster. And what I want to do is create an interior border so that my images can actually break the boundaries a little bit. And there's a few ways I can do this for sure. But one way I'm going to do it, which is pretty simple when you use your compositing skills, and that's why we learn compositing first, so you can always use it on projects, is I'm going to hold down Option, I'm going to go to the very top layer, and then say Layer Merge Visible. Let's go to the very top, go to the very bottom of the Layer Options and say Merge Visible while holding down Option. That will compress everything into a new layer that's on top of everything else. So this rasterizes everything together. I'm only doing that so I can select this border with contiguous at a tolerance of 32 with my magic wand. Once I select that white border, unfortunately, let's try less than 32 because there's some brightness in my poster edges. Let's try 12. Yes, that will work. 
Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that with Command-J onto a new layer. 